a little bit about me and my company before we go ahead. This is a Josh software, and I'm sorry it's not Josh. I'm sorry for all the Josh and the Josh was around. But Josh in my mother tongue in Hindi means enthusiasm. And that's what, what we are all about. We believe that programming is an art, and we are based in India. And this is what we do. We work enthusiastically and build masterpieces. We've been working exclusively in Ruby on Rails for the past three years. And typically, this is how our journey begins. All with protective gear, all ready to ride the rough waters. And when the time finally comes, usually we're successful, but always drenched. <laughs> well, uh, it all goes to show either you all will fall in love with Splat, or I fall flat on my face. A little more about us is our website and our blog. Well, my presentation is all about mobile value added services, so I thought I should at least get into a little basics of what value added services for mobile providers are. Anything that is beyond that of voice offering by telcos is termed as mobile WAS. <coughs> SMS. SMS borders on mobile WAS are part of a whole deal. Today, with any cell phone reception that you get, any voice facility you always have texting. Well, so you have any sort of GPS or any sort of movie schedules, color tunes, score alerts, IPTV, email, all these are value added services on mobile. What we are going to deal with is the SMS aspect of mobile value added services. Smartphones are pretty cool. I know everyone here, almost, almost everyone has an iPhone. But there are a few problems I see when using SMS or uh, smartphones for mobile value added services. You're restricted by infrastructure. You require at least 3G spectrum for getting really cool applications out, for getting stuff in. But guys, are we targeting only our select audience here, or are we targeting the world? The aim here is to target the world, get a global presence. Sometimes mobile value added services are restricted by geographies or by laws. In India, for example, the 3G spectrum is opening up. It's being purchased by, by the government for a whopping 55 crore. 55 crore crore. So it's like a crazy amount of money. And that's where the market is going. In spite of all this, smartphones are for the tech savvy. Well, like my two-year-old nephew. <laughs> when my when his dad comes home, he, he asks for the iPhone. I have no idea whether he meant Apple or iPhone, but well, that's where the world is going in. SMS, on the contrary, on the other hand, has a global reach. It's a photo of uh, people in Africa. And uncanny to the temporary phone that I have purchased here. So, it has uh, SMS. Wherever there is cell phone connectivity, you will always find SMS connectivity even in the really deep jungles. And a good part about the emotional aspect as well as the case study of SMS as a value added services comes from a country in Malawi. Have you heard of Malawi? Malawi is a very small country in Africa, which was struck by famine in 2002. The UNICEF and the USAID went down there, and they tried to get in the statistical data for malnutrition and kids there. So, they initially needed an Excel sheet on paper. They had it. The, so how do you detect if a kid is suffering from malnutrition? Malnutrition is by measuring the height, weight, and the upper arm circumference. Well, this data had to be sent to a processing unit in the US somewhere, where they would finally detect if the person actually has malnutrition. By the time the reports came back, either it was error prone, kid is missing, kid is probably dead. Well, they managed to do this for one whole year. After UNICEF and the USAID moved out of Malawi, the whole process went for a toss. Because of all sorts of overheads, bureaucracy, red tape, uh, paper lot, you know, lots of paperwork involved, human errors. And they finally came up with a new system called Rapid SMS. Rapid SMS today is an open source framework, which is useful for managing SMS information. So it's not an SMS port. It's for managing the data. But they could send an SMS with the growth monitoring center, child stats, 
get the sensors, send the upper arms so it comes and get immediate response from the system there, whether the kid is malnutrition or not, and proceed. With the success of rapid SMS, a lot of web portals realize that there is a lot of benefit by going just beyond your online presence. You want to be great. Almost everyone on your iPhone uses Twitter account. Uses your Twitter to send tweets. You use your phone because it's easy. If you had the facility of using SMS, it would make your life easier. Twitter has made huge amount of progress by simply, I'm sorry about that. Twitter has made huge amount of progress by simply up by providing an SMS facility in various countries. And this is where most of the value added services come in for any online portal, for any application that wants to go beyond the offering of just their online audience. So, how does one start? It's very simple. Let's choose a vendor. Maybe Video, Clickatel, Tropo, Vimobo, Bulk SMS, and these are only a few of them. There are like about 100 of them. There are 100 of them with their offerings in different countries, presence in different countries, and we should never forget the different protocols. There's REST, so HTTP, <coughs> and these are just a few of them again. So, what are the choices you make? Do you go with the cheapest alternative? Do you go with the costliest alternative? Maybe you have good support. Maybe just take any one vendor, set it up, and we tackle the issues when it comes, resolve them as they come in. But, you know, you're always going to have your doubts. Did I make, did I choose the right vendor? Can I change my vendor now? Suppose they just change their, they change their plan and it becomes really expensive? Haven't you shot myself in the foot? If these are the three questions that you actually ask yourself ever when you're doing this, uh, it's too late. What's the solution though? One of the simple solutions is hire one of the unwitting developers fresh out of graduate school. Tell him that I'm going to give you some sort of amazing work to work in the new protocols. You will learn RESTful APIs, and you can work with third-party integration and get into development. Maybe an alternative outsource to India. <laughs> and I, could, I could help but get that one in there, so. <laughs> I have to take it. <laughs> well, that still doesn't solve the problem, does it? Every vendor has different APIs. Every vendor does things differently because there are no standards. To give you an example, we chose ClickTap. Just to send bulk messages, customized bulk messages to people, you have to actually go through this vomit of code. And I have tried to strip out as much as I can from it. You have to set up your authorization, get your session ID, then start a batch, get some fields integrated, Notice that you have fields here. Clickatel says, please put it in, put a hash field one, hash field two. Now you set, formulate, somehow get your dynamic data in, formulate your SMS information, send the SMS, close the batch. This is one way of doing it. The other, some other company probably do it as a simple XML file. It's a pretty neat startup in India though. You're using, uh, embedded Ruby syntax in the XML to get information and replace uh, dynamic data. But if I had to change vendors, that would really kill me. I have Clickatel having HTTP APIs, XML APIs. These guys of XML, some but Twilio has REST. You can do it the splat way. Set your vendor, keep on format, send the SMS. We'll probably do a demo later on. And I'm going to ask some of y'all, I'm going to bribe some of y'all with some coffee or some beer if if you could register numbers here so that they can receive an SMS. So for a few cents for a beer. And this API mess that I talk about continues. Nothing is ever complete without a matrix. <laughs> all those green things coming down when I thought you could see the arrows in the process of different vendors we evaluated and their different offerings. And you'll notice that not all of them have everything that you really want. Yeah. Clickitel is pretty cool because it has a very huge global presence. But, you know, they have different types of uh, support, HTTP authentication support, they have different types of 
sending bulk message, bulk messages. They have, they're supporting different types of protocols. Suppose we take, for example, let's do a clicker term because it's got most of the offerings here. I want to have a portal which is launched with mobile malware services in the US, in Africa, and in India. Clickertel is a good player. It has support everywhere. But it can get expensive if you're sending international APIs. Wouldn't it be cool if I could take a vendor in, in the US, get the good best option in Africa and good best option in India, and auto detect which SMS goes to which country, which value added customer, and send it via that, via that particular gateway. So Splat came about because it was a necessity for us. It was not something that we thought about doing something cool. We actually had a few clients, one in Europe, one in India, and one in the US who said we want the SMS integration, and our developers were coming back and kicking us, saying, you know what, we don't want to do the same thing again and again. So we said, let's, let's build a library such that it's generic enough to ensure that you can change your vendors. You can do a lot of other, other stuff. You can manipulate information. You can work with different vendors at the same time. And that's why I really love Splat. Splat is not our SMS vendor. So we are just a library. It's an open source library, package is a gem. It's available as Josh Splat. Not that we want to put our name, but somebody had already taken the Splat gem. So. But we automatically integrate with different vendors. Currently, we are supporting four of them. We are supporting Clickertel, Twilio, uh, Bank SMS, and one more Indian vendor, Vimovo. Splat, as I said, is not a service. You still have to purchase a subscription. But those nagging questions earlier, well, this makes your life easier. You can afford to make mistakes. You can afford to choose. And you can afford to change your choices later on without any fear. You again, there are, there are like Clicktel gives you only 10 credits. Twilio gives you $30 for development environment. We're planning on building, we've not built one yet, but we're planning on building a test bogus SMS gateway where you can test out all different, turn on different types of SMS and send it to the different customers. I still have to ask Jim how he's hosted the raffle. I think it's on Twilio. On Tropo. Tropo? Cool. Oh, yes, of course. Must, should be. It has to be one of the sponsors there. Cool. So, these are, th these are some of the things that we felt are good features that you need to add. Imagine if you had to send a bulk SMS list. You had to maintain a list, and you want to trend it. You want to see how many of these people actually responded to your SMS. How many of them came back with incoming data information. And you want to trend on this information. Not just in your local sector, but globally. We help you do that. So we can schedule SMSs, we can standardize reports. Clickertel has different reporting format. Twilio has a different, Twilio does not have a reporting format, it's just a status. All these vendors, all these vendors are, have their own formats of status, and Splat helps you standardize that. So we can actually go about setting some sort of standards for sending SMS, some sort of API standards, some sort of standardization of the reports, we can do some trend analysis. And all was not so smooth. We kept having this nagging doubt. Why isn't it already there? Why hasn't somebody already done it? And among some of the challenges that we faced was the big number, mobile number formats. All these are valid number formats. And every vendor says, we will do it only our way. Clickertel says, I want the country code followed by the number, but without the plus sign. Another, another vendor says, I work only in India, so I don't want the country code. A third vendor says, I'll accept any format. Somebody wants a dash. So the way around this would be, we set our own default number. Is it worse? <laughs> OK, so we set our own, own format, a default format, which is highlighted there in the comments there. We set with a plus country code with a space and give you a mobile number. <coughs> well, it's mobile number. The entire number itself can vary between 8 to 12 digits in different countries. So we have to keep some standard. But now the question arises that if I already have a legacy database 
of say 10,000 customers in my own number format. How do I use plan? We provided the facility for all that. Just before you're sending the SMS, you can manipulate the number to Splat format so that you're following the standards. Maybe if you really want to risk it, change the regex that we have before. Change this to what to suit your need, but you'll probably be able to work with one vendor. But of course, we have it, it's Ruby, we have to provide a short circuit route. It's we're providing a good default option, but that does not mandate it. Installing and configuring Splat is as simple as general stock. We've also provided generators for a Rails application, so you can use it easily through Rails. And there are two configuration files which are necessary. One is for default Splat configuration, and one is for your vendors. The vendors is you have to set your subscription provider key or password or username, and you should be able to send some SMSs. Demo time. Okay, so I have my phone here. What we can do is is better. Four lines of code to send an SMS. I'm currently using Twilio, and it might be worth to show. Uh, this is the vendor's file. Just uh, remove the transparency. Is this clear enough? Okay, cool. So this is the vendors.yml file. And uh, that simple is providing your credentials for Twitter, providing your credentials and keys for Filio. And you can send your SMS. Sending an SMS is you have to create a new instance of whichever vendor you want to work with and send your SMS. So I'm sending it to Pilio right now. And hopefully something can happen after some time. But, cool. I'm sure I'll get the SMS story. There it comes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, hey, ooh, somebody else got the SMS <laughs> No, that's me. But, so it's, it's as simple as this. Now, suppose I want to change my vendor. At a later stage, all I have to do is go and change one word, ensure my vendor's file is updated, change this to click adapt, run the same one again, sends to click adapt. What I've achieved here is ensuring that I'm completely SMS vendor agnostic. I don't have to bother about how vendors work with it, how vendors, I should have kept my phone a little higher, it's pretty interesting, right? So, sound, volume. So, this is how we change vendors when you're, when you're working with Slack. How about we go through another demo where we want to work with multiple gateways together. In the sense, if I have, I'm working multiple numbers, and I'm working with uh, a US phone number and an India phone number, and when I, when I have to send the same sort of SMS, I can choose my different vendors. <coughs> the code I'm instantiating is black twice. I'm using one of the bulk SMS from India. And I'm using a simple regular expression to check the country code. And I'm setting my default tone to something pretty fancy. Okay. But you guys should hear, right? So, so if I'm sending to one of the numbers in the US 
And one of the numbers in India, I can use a simple regular expression to choose which gate pair I want to send. Now, the beauty of this is that if we use things like delay jobs, we can actually send bulk SMSs with split second using the right gateway. Using multiple gateways, you being country sensitive or country code context sensitive. And that's exactly how this works. So of course, you will not be able to see the, the demo of the one going to India. But something should come here. Imagine life without trying to work with integrations of different Clickatel or Twilio APIs. When we work with such cases, it's very easy for us to realize that Eureka. OK, I'm sorry, this is a temporary phone. I don't know how to switch that tune off so much. <laughs> <laughs> so this, was, this is another one. Now, I have a, one more demo lined up, but I have a query account. Do I have any volunteers where I can actually send bulk SMS, uh, customized bulk SMS through Twilio? Now, Twilio does not support customized SMSs. Twilio does not support bulk SMS. But we do it through Splat. Uh, the only problem is I have a developer account. So before we activate, we, I have to actually activate your account on, uh, on Twilio. So do I have any volunteers? Oh, cool. That's cool. I kept hope for that. So <laughs> I'll add you in my column. Go ahead and just send your Well, the uh, thing is, uh, no, since I'm... Go ahead and just send your Sorry? Go ahead and just send your I got you taken care of. I'm uh, sorry. He did it for you. I upgraded your account for you. Oh, you did? I can send it to everyone? Yep, one second. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, and you know what the worst part was? I thought I, all I had to do was upgrade my account. So instead of using developer mode, I actually paid $20 to it. And it still didn't let me send SMS to any number. You have to add a phone number you can send from that phone. We can work it out after. You should be fine to send you. Should I send? If you go to phone numbers. OK. I am on phone numbers right now. So if you click buy a number on the top right there. You want me to buy one right now? Yeah, it takes two seconds. Okay. And then just pick a state. Any area code? Anyone that's not gray, yeah. If you use that, go click purchase number. And then if you use that one as the prompt number, you can send anybody. Okay, so, so red purchase there first, yep. Okay. All right. So now I have to use this number to yep, just set that as the trauma. This rocks. So I'll let you all in on another secret. We integrate with Twilio last night. What you're doing right now is uh, no, I, I got a better way to put that. Before coming here, somebody's telling me about how to give cool presentations. Oh, did presentations there. Okay, hey, pretty cool site. I like one thing there. You go stand naked in front of the audience. That's what I'm doing right now. Four twenty-nine. Okay, so volunteers. You, uh, 512. 512. 512. 777. 777. 1144. 1144. 1144. And what's your Twitter ID or your name? Uh, Five one two six three two six three two six six one seven six six one seven. And your good name would be Keith. K I E T H. K E I T H. Any other ones here? Two eight one. Plus one. Eight two seven. Sorry, two eight one. Two eight one. Eight two seven. Eight two seven. 
Six five seven four. Six five seven four. Rob. Wrong bracket on the left. Yeah, six 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 bracket on the left. Sorry, what? Left bracket. bracket. Left. You got a right bracket oh. for left second. Are you good? No, sorry. Please come four 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 on five. Four on five? 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 I think that would be a good track. Okay. So, before I send this, a simple way of sending customized messages. We are using as a dollar, dollar format, dollar one, dollar two, any sort of dollar format if you pass. Uh, they are all URI encoded, so we can have special characters in SMS. We we are using a hash party mapper, so we get the number plus we get the, the message that you can send. We can even set defaults. So in case uh, I have, say, dollar two somewhere, and I say for my surname, and I don't have a surname, I can set a default, say, empty string or uh, user or something like that. So we are doing a best effort here. OK. It's time. I didn't send anything, <laughs> but thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, let the games begin. And currently everything is synchronous, so plan is to get to be their job. That's somebody. Who? Anyone else? I got it. Hey, who? I haven't got it yet, so. <laughs> well, it's always the case, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, yeah, I have a live account. Cool, thanks. So, that's what Splat is all about. We are not done yet. A simple example here for customized messages. What's the Splat roadmap? Splat is uh, about three months old. We had uh, RubyConf India, where my, my colleague and me got an idea about doing this. We spoke to some people, searched the net, and said, you know what, let's just do it. And uh, in the past three months, what we've tried to do is try to send a whole list of bulk SMS support for Splat. We've done uh, four vendors, video being the last. We wanted to do Troco, but we ran into trouble because Topo said you need to have numbers in, I think, four cities right now? Four or five cities only, so uh, we didn't have numbers. So we couldn't do Tropo. But we plan to integrate with as many vendors as we can. We want to do the stuff that, uh, you know, we want to look at things like Spreedly or Authorize.net. We're looking at a common layer for getting restful services out. And uh, there could be some business potential that we do later, but it's too early for that. So our aim is to get in all the features that we want to ease sending bulk SMS, getting incoming SMS. We already have a code for uh, registering incoming SMS, but I can't demo it because it's extremely expensive. Uh, but we plan also to do trending. Now, trending opens up a whole new avenue of uh, business potential. And I don't know where we're going to go from here. But we see a lot of potential in trying to see where we can get this library up to speed. That would be. Thank you so much. Any questions? You've uh, done much testing on Linux. We've, well, our development has been on uh, Ubuntu right now. Because I just tried to require Splat. It doesn't recognize Linux dash so I think it's a little gap. Yes, so we, we are. We have, this has absolutely been a proof of concept for us. The last two, three weeks has been a roller coaster ride. But uh, it, it, we've done our development in do so wherever Ruby supported, it should ideally work. Okay. So we've, been, uh, we've, got, we've been trying to put in some specs, and we've uh, got to, you know, against, against uh, all the experts' advice, we said let's get a proof of concept out before we do any other work. 
and things like these are actually getting helping us to get uh, a little more traction with a lot of clients. Unfortunately, in the US, there has been a lot. There is always SMS foo, which helps you send an email to SMS, but it has fault finding issues. You have, it gets sent an email in its own format. Uh, setting up an SMS gateway, or sorry, getting a subscription is sometimes expensive. So, will God help us? <laughs> Any other questions? You need yes. a gateway in order for this to work, right? No, ours is a library, but you need a gateway subscription. Okay, so, so you need to pay money in order for your app to send SMS. Messages. Yes, we, that's why I said Splat is not an SMS vendor. Yeah. It's just a library, it helps you assist. So it's a development tool right now. Okay. Where the developers don't have to bother about uh, getting into the nitty gritties of either the vendor or their protocol. Yes, yeah. sir. The receiving text from the SMS device, if I were to reply to you, well, what would happen technically on the Twilio account? Would you receive my reply and kind of dialogue? So, or Splat, as a library today, we'll register a callback. And we'll be registering that with, uh, with the URL. So there are different types. Sometimes you can register a callback function, or you can register a callback URL, which internally, Splat will register with Twilio. So when you get an SMS on your Twilio phone number, it will probably come back to the Splat library, which will call your function for processing the incoming message. We've already done that with one of our Indian vendors, so that's unfortunately why I can't demo it here. But uh, we've already done that. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you so much.